Welcome along to another edition of LS11 here on TV. Why the fallout from the West Yorkshire Derby at the weekend continues this week. Uh, Huddersfield Town, the victors, 4-1 winners at Ellen Road. So where does it leave uh, the Whites and Steve Evans? And Huddersfield Town, of course, uh, looking ahead to a bright future under David Wagner. And here to uh, look at that game and discuss uh, both their teams' uh, fortunes at the moment, it's lifelong Leeds fan Bernard and, uh, of course, lifelong Huddersfield fan Richard Kosmala. Um, the fallout from, from Saturday then. I've not said this very often, I hope I never have to say it very often again, but um, can Leeds take take some guidance from what Huddersfield have done? And I, and I talk about that in terms of style of football, coach that they brought in, raised a few eyebrows when David Wagner came in. I'll be honest with you, Tom. I thought when we beat them 3-0, I've said this a number of times, that uh, when, we, when we beat them around there 3-0, they played some good stuff. Well, first half hour. You know, yeah. they, and, and the yeah. second half when we did, we, we'd, we'd got our noses in front with three great goals and... We were never going to lose it, but they still played the same way. You know, they were, they were attacking us, and, and how they missed they missed like two or three really, really good chances that game. And I didn't really see that much difference in how they played that day as, as they played today. They, they come out and they go for it. They play some nice football, and you know, I I, I felt we were, before the game. I said, you know, give me a point today, I'll take it because this team can play. And how static and how sluggish we are in midfield, I did fear for us. Uh, and as I just said there, that when we got one 0 up, I thought it was against the run of play, but I still think it was going to be a long afternoon. So. You, you can take positives from it, um, Cosy will probably know more than I will whether he can see big changes from what David Wagner took on board when he first came in as to how they are, where they are now, but I saw a team down at, down at Huddersfield that played attacking, fast, sprightly football, but I've seen it when we beat them these, you know, the last three or four times, whatever. they've still, they still played, I felt, as good if not better fast moving football, the kind of football I like to watch, than we have. I couldn't believe the room we had though, Bernard. I have to be honest, the week before, Joey Barton just jumping on LR midfield yeah. and, and it, you know, we were getting the ball and bang, he had the ball off us. I couldn't believe the space yeah, that but we had. You know, on Saturday we were just allowed to roam and run and pretty much do what we wanted and I was quite shocked at that. But then you but think you look of the at team you, selection. Yeah, you, maybe you look at the midfield, we had the four uh, and we couldn't, the, 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 the two central midfielders for me, who I thought were very, very poor, they couldn't tackle the way out of a paper bag. Uh, and and you know, you've got your, your two men on the on the bench, and De Garaga and Cook, who are feisty, can get a foot in. And it was obvious within 10, 15 minutes, not only had they flooded the midfield, but also that we didn't have the people in there who could, with a four, who were energetic enough and physical enough to get the ball back and try to play with it. And, you know, it just, it really did. Very early on, and even before the game, it stunk of, 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 of bad team selection. Uh, and I think that's why, I want, you know, I'm surprised that you're surprised the fact that, that happened because when you've got five against four, your four have got to be good, yeah. uh, and, and you, you, one of your, your forwards have got to track back. And we didn't. None of us did that on on, on Saturday, so it, it wasn't a surprise. And as you say, Murphy and and Moet are the most physical of of players. It's an interesting one, though. I think there seems to be so many teams out of not great on the counter, yeah. but they're hopeless at dictating yeah. the game. And the, 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 there's such a gulf between the top eight, I think, and the bottom, more than I've ever known it in a championship, but. Everyone's good on the break, we're good on the break. When we have to dictate a game, you know, take it to opposition, and it looked like the same from Leeds. I mean, your run record's really bad this season. It's like, okay, you, put, you can pick guys off on the break, and we just. You've got to have that bravery, haven't you? I think, yeah, to, to absolutely. Play I think that. It says it all, doesn't it? When you, you know, I think we've got we're probably up with quite a good away record compared to most teams. We're probably up there. Yeah. But our home record's one of the worst. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? The, 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 final, point, final point for both of you then, remainder of the season. I think from the Leeds perspective, Leeds fans are looking and wondering what's going to happen next, future of Steve Evans, where are Leeds going to finish in the table because it, it could be further down than they are right now, it could be a little bit higher up, who knows. I've heard us feel fine, but you just can't wait now for the for the remaining games to sort of tick by and just and, and, and see what else. Uh, yeah, exciting. I mean, I'd, li I'd like to knock over a big, a bit of, big Italy if I could say yeah. it right. That's, that's the thing, we've not really beaten anyone on you know, the top eight and we've got a good chance Wednesday or Middlesbrough to see what we can do in that. but. I mean, it's a good job, really, because the way Rotherham are coming yeah. in the wet sail, it's, it's unbelievable. And they're Fulham, you know, yeah. a team that I were thinking, you know, should be doing better, maybe challenging for playoffs. They could be the ones that goes. But, yeah, for the rest of the season, definitely. And, obviously, 11,000 season tickets being sold already. The deadline's been extended. And, yeah, there's a real feel-good factor about the place. And, uh, yeah, you just want to get to the next game. So, it's all good from our point of view at the moment. Opposite feelings for Leeds fans. Absolutely, yeah. yeah we've, for me, looking out, from outside looking in, we don't seem to have any structure anywhere in the club, from from the the owner down. There doesn't seem to be any kind of uh, proper business acumen in there. And you know, you, who's going to come? You know, the word gets gets round in football. The grapevine is usually pretty red hot with that. So I feel that you know we just need some kind of some vision. 
uh, and we need it put out there to the fans. But you know, with the owner that we've got, he's got to sort of try to learn. He's, he's got to bite the bullet now and come out and say, that "This is where we where we are. This is what we're going to do." Uh, and he's got to make an obviously decision on the manager. I think he'll be he'll probably be given to the end of the season because he's, that's when his contract runs out, and it'll, both parties can part amicably. Uh, and then we can rebuild. But I think the fans with season tickets coming, like because of the, the reducer tickets, we're, we're probably not going to do that. We might freeze them at best. But the fact is, they've got to give us something there to, to want to go out and buy them. And as I say, it's, at the moment in time, from outside looking in, it all looks typically chaotic. 27,000 there, Bernie, from Leeds Park. You're incredible for being served up muck for most of the season, but yet. And a game which probably didn't mean a right lot, you know. It's amazing what three wins does on the bounce. We, we see them home and away at times. Well. You know, we, we, we know the three wins are bound. It's a bit of yeah. a, a smoke screen. Mm. You know, those three wins on the bounce weren't deserving of an extra X thousand people on the, the gates, but people who sat at home on the armchairs listening under it. Yeah. And people came at work who, who, who sit on the armchairs. What happened to Leeds? God, they've won three on the bounce. That's unbelievable getting beat for one. I said, it's not unbelievable. So you go and watch, you get out of your armchair and go watch them week in, week out. And those signed results could happen every week, you know, because it's the way we are at the moment. Yeah, anything could happen. One set of fans smiling over Christmas, one set, not so much. Uh, and you can guess which two of us uh, in this particular room aren't smiling at the moment. Looking forward to the next game. From Leeds United and Huddersfield's point of view as well, uh, thanks to Bernard, thanks to Cosy for joining us for this edition of LS11. Uh, thanks to you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to TVY.